Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. The Silent Waterfall, another adventure of George Valentine. Listen to this, George. Huh? Dear Mr. Valentine... My name is Dora Duncan. I need your help desperately. I don't know any hey, man hey, that hey, I... Hey, hey, wait a minute, Brooksy. When did that letter come? Just now. Yeah, but the mailman was here an hour ago. Oh, well, she brought it herself, George. What? She's out there in the waiting room now. You know, the deep, dark problem type. Write the note so she won't have to confide her secrets to the underlings. Well, didn't you explain your lofty status in this menagerie? Yeah, oh, she's like a duchess imitating... Greta Garbo, George. So I just opened her note instead. <laughs> okay, what else is in it? Um, I don't know any men that I can trust. I don't know any man to turn to. Uh Will you please, please come to my home this evening at 8 o'clock? I live in the country. Waterfall House on South River Road, signed Dora Duncan. Yeah, sounds anxious. Well... It sounds fishy. Come here, George. I left the other door open. There. You can see her through there. Oh. (laughs) You mean you can't quite swallow that... I don't know any men routine. Oh, well, she could use a little more makeup. But... Makeup would only get in the way, Angel. George, she's not that good looking. That mink coat she's wearing is real, so she must be wealthy. She has enough. job for on underneath, Angel. Maybe she's only attractive to horses. Uh-oh, she's looking at me. Come well, on, let's go. Watch your step, pony boy. Uh, uh, Miss Duncan, I'm George Valentine. Now, why are you so anxious to have someone at your house tonight? I mean... Couldn't you explain it a little more? <laughs> yeah, well, no. And you can say anything you want to in front of her. You can... You can... George. Do you understand me, Miss Duncan? She's nodding her head. Yeah, but... She can't hear. She can't speak, either. Oh, George, it never even occurred to me that... Wait a minute. She wants to write. Here's a pencil. Here. I could read them through the open door in the other office, too. Mr. Valentine, I wouldn't, for one instant, consider... Oh, now, wait a minute, Miss Duncan. George, stop her. Look, look here. I'm sorry. We didn't mean anything. Now, don't turn away. Watch me. Watch my lips. I said I'm sorry. Miss Duncan, you shouldn't be so touchy. Of course we'll be there tonight. I said we'll be there. Eight o'clock. Do you understand me? To you? George. She kissed you. Yeah. And she'd been crying. Well, come in. Come on in before the house blows down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm her sister. I'm Cynthia. Here, I'll take your coat, Miss Brooks. Oh, thanks. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh boy, look at that fireplace. <laughs> well, help yourself. She'll be down, I guess. The maid says she's dressing tonight. That's because I have a suit on. What's that? Huh? <laughs> She'll be down. That's her music, you hear. Drums. Plays a stack of drum records on a phonograph all the time. Says she can feel the rhythm of it. You want a drink? Drum buoy, maybe? <laughs> no, no, thanks. Uh, say, this is quite a place, isn't it? I guess so. I will. Somebody's a hunter. All the trophies and the guns hanging on the wall. My father. He's dead, though. She liked it, too. He used to take her riding and fishing with him all the time. Tell me, Cynthia, has your sister always been the way she is? No, Mr. Valentine. Dora lost her hearing from an accident. When she was 13 years old. Oh. But then her speech shouldn't have been... Oh, that was part of it. 
she was in bed for more than a year. It was one of those mental things, too. The doctor said she was forgetting how. But she can hear and talk a little now if she wants to. I see. She, she used to have a beautiful voice, and now she can't trust what it sounds like. She can't hear it. She's proud. <laughs> Catch on quick, don't you? What are you doing here tonight? Well, didn't Dora inform you? I've only seen her for a few minutes since she got back. You mean back from town this afternoon? Back from India. Yesterday. You didn't know that? No. Well, what difference does it make? So she travels? Yes, she travels. And when she got back, she sent for me. She ordered me out here tonight, too. What is it you want to explain, Cynthia? Nothing. Why should I? This is her house. It's her money. Father left it all to her, and the courts upheld it. She's a poor, suffering little thing, Mr. Valentine, and you might as well... Oh, it's uh, 8 o'clock, isn't it? Yes, but I think that's the door. I know, but I've got to shut that door, those drums. Hello. Oh, it's you. Can I come in, Cynthia? Of course, Jake. Oh, thanks. Dora wanted me to... I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, it sure is a cold night. It's almost as cold as... La hey, is that him? What? <laughs> oh, no, that's not Everett. Oh. You needn't look so tough, darling. This is Jake Mannering, Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine. Oh, well, hello. I'm sure pleased to meet you. Jake is the next-door neighbor. Uh-huh. Well, who's Everett, Cynthia? Everett? Everett Stone. <laughs> The devil. Oh, great. That doesn't tell me anything. Now, look, Cynthia, there's no need he's, to... He's uh, Mr. Mannering's new competition, isn't he, Jake? No. No, he's not. Just some guy Dora met on the boat coming home, Mr. Valentine, or over there in India. I don't know. Cynthia doesn't know either. She's never met him. Oh, but Dora told you all about him, didn't she? Wasn't that what you were yelling at her for out there after supper? Out there in the dollhouse? So funny, Miss Brooks, the way people forget and raise their voices at a deaf person. Cynthia, I didn't see Dora in the dollhouse, and besides, I don't yell at people. Now, will you please stop I'm all this? I'm sorry, Jake. I, I, I didn't really know what it was. I, I, I guess I'm awfully tired. Oh, sure, Cynthia. But gosh, you folks must think that What's we're What's the matter, all... Mr. Valentine? Where are you going? Oh, no place particular. Just listening to the drums. You know, that's the same record was playing when we came in here. George. The phonograph up there is just turning them over and over. Dora. Dora. Dora? Her evening clothes are still laid out on the bed, George. Yeah. The maid says she hasn't seen her since lunch. The clothes and the records and everything were just notes. Dora gives all her orders by note. Uh-huh, lunch, huh? Well, around supper time, it was the dollhouse. Okay, let's take a look at that dollhouse. How about that? A perfect little dollhouse right on the river by a waterfall. Oh, the falls upstream a little ways. Oh, here, will you flip your flashlight over? It's a pretty fancy dollhouse. Her father built it for Dora. She likes the rhythm of the water, I guess. She always has. But George, she's not here either. <laughs> Oh. That's Cynthia. Come on. No, this way, upstream. Oh, Dora. She's drowned. She has been drowned. Okay, I'll call Riley when we get back to the house. Yes, George. Hey, Brooksy. Dora was upstream in a dollhouse just below the waterfall. So it must have happened farther up someplace, and a body was washed over the fall and then against the bank there. But, Brooksy, I'm positive it happened at least an hour or two ago. Just like I'm positive it wasn't suicide. What's that, Mr. Valentine? Um, he, he was just saying... Who else could have been around here a couple of hours ago, Cynthia? Well, anybody with all the woods here. What do you mean? I mean... There was nobody supposed to be here, except maybe that stone person. Uh-huh, him again. I don't really know, of course. I'm... Hey, wait a minute, hold it, listen. Hello there. Hello, where is everybody? I say, hello. Oh, Mr. Frail. Cynthia, there you are. 
What on earth's going on out here? Mr. Frail, something How terrible. How do you do, Mr. Frail? My name's Valentine. What's that? Let's uh, both say it together. Who are you? Well, any friend of Dora's is a friend of mine, young man. Cynthia, I'm so sorry I couldn't make it out any earlier, but the traffic... Oh. Valentine, huh? I thought perhaps you were this stone chap. I'm Dora's lawyer, you know. Business investments and those... I see. Who's that coming now? That's Jake, isn't it? What on earth is he carrying in that blanket? He's carrying your client, Mr. Frail. Stick around. Maybe you can defend somebody for murder. I don't know why we're here, I tell you. I rather assumed it was to meet this new young man, that's all. Oh, sure. Stone, stone, stone. That's all I hear. But at least you can hear, Mr. Valentine. Life wasn't very easy for Dora, you know, living in the silence, not knowing what people were saying, people trying to take advantage of her. Hey, that's not true, Mr. Frail. Now, see here, Nobody Jake. ever took advantage of her. Nobody ever tried to, not even for her money. She just thought they were. She wouldn't let herself be loved. She was so proud, so afraid of pity. Just that... because you weren't successful, young she man. She never let herself love anybody. I'm just trying to face it. I don't know who this guy Stone is, but I can't believe it. I'll he... tell you who he is, Mr. Valentine. A fortune hunter, that's all. A smooth-talking fortune hunter. And some man was with her earlier this evening, you said? Cynthia heard a man's voice in the dollhouse, and if it wasn't Jake Hill, then... You talk too much yourself, Mr. Frail. No, no, I'll go answer that. Hi, Mac. Duncan's residence, ain't he? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I got a fair looking for it. Oh, wait a minute. Who is he? How should I know? Don't ask me. Never mind, never mind. I see now. Yeah, it's the people's choice. Who else? What's this? Here comes the guy who shouts at people, Mr. Frail. The smooth-talking fortune hunter. Now, why didn't I guess? What do you mean? Oh, I should have figured the guy a girl like Dora might have fallen for. Hello, Mr. Everett Stone. Welcome to nothing. <laughs> no point in talking to him, Mac. Yeah, I know, I know. He's deaf and dumb, too, isn't he? Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Now's the time of year when Chevron Supreme gasoline lends a helping hand to your car in more ways than one. Take this business of cold starts, for example. It can be awfully exasperating bearing down the starter with no results. And that means an unnecessary drain on your car's battery, too. Chevron Supreme, a premium quality gasoline, contains special blending agents that assure fast starts in the coldest weather. Not only that, it's climate-tailored to meet the demands of each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. That's why, wherever you drive, Chevron Supreme gives faster starts, smoother pickup in traffic, and ping-free power on hills. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Try a tank full. You'll notice right away how much better your car responds. Ask for Chevron Supreme at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. She was a strange, proud girl, oversensitive about the fact that she couldn't speak or hear. She asked you and several others to keep an urgent evening appointment at her palatial home in the country, Waterfall House. Well, you kept the appointment, but she didn't, because Dora Duncan was dead before any of you arrived. And now the last and strangest of the guests has arrived, the person no one knew and everyone seemed to suspect, until they realized that Everett Stone, Dora's newest boyfriend, is a man who lives in the same half-world of silence. I'm watching, Mr. Stone. Write some more. That's who I am, Miss Brooks. A bum, I guess. Until a friend brought her to me there in Calcutta. She was wonderful to me. Maybe because I was even worse off than she. It only happened to me a year ago, my being like this. Result of a shock. I guess I was pretty sour until I met her. She was even starting me on learning how to read lips. She was even... Oh, nuts. 
Go on, Mr. Stone. Keep riding, won't you? I... I loved her. Now, look. Welcome to nothing. I... I know. But did she say anything to you about planning to meet a man out here around supper time at the dollhouse? Oh, here. Meeting man out here. The doll house. No. What do you mean? What man? Where is Mr. Valentine? No, no, Riley, I haven't found the place it happened yet. It was out in the woods, up the river. All right, all right. I'll be out there as fast as I can. We'll get some men to help after I get out there. The local doc says she was dead before her lungs filled, so it wasn't drowning. You understand me? Oh, Valentine, how you can always manage to get mixed up in... Now, look, I tell you what you do. Never mind, I know what to do. Find a guy who does exactly what you're doing. Huh? Yells at people, even if they can't hear. Feeling any better, Cynthia? Oh, I've just been crying. I can't help it. Why have you been crying, Cynthia? You didn't like her. She's dressing tonight. That's because I have a suit on. What? She's a poor, suffering little thing, Mr. Valentine. Stop it, stop it. Cynthia, you hated Dora. You made that clear. Mr. Valentine... She ordered you out here tonight, you said. Dora's so beautiful. She's got all the money. She gets all the sympathy. No. She gets all the boys, isn't that it? It's about Jake. You love him. <laughs> Lady, maybe I don't blame you for resenting your sister. You should. You should. She was handicapped. But she wasn't like most people when they're handicapped. She was a little hard to take, maybe. Oh, my trouble is I've always been normal. She didn't want Jake, but she wouldn't let you have him. Only out there in the dollhouse, for some reason, he got mad at her. It was Jake's voice you heard, wasn't it? That was your first impression, and that's who it was. No. No, no. I, I don't know who it was. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're again saying you heard it. Confused, well, aren't you? So either you're protecting the guy or... Or what? Or you're protecting yourself. Thanks for clearing up the motive, Cynthia. Yours, I mean. The question was nice and simple, Mr. Frail. Now, once again, how much money did Dora Duncan have? But really, with the current value of investment... How much? I should say eight or nine hundred thousand. Of course, one can't be sure. Why? Well, it's a stock poser my friend Riley always asks the minute he comes in the door. Money, motive, motive, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just an old cynic. Now, uh, where's this guy, Jake Mannering? I'm uh, here, Lieutenant. I'm sure pleased Save it to... and listen. We ran a check with all the specialists in town, and one of them clicked. Definite improvement after her trip, the doc says. 25% hearing, he called it. Okay, Riley, so Dora was getting well. And so she ordered a gathering of the clan out here tonight, my friend. Why? Why? Did someone speak out of turn and get her upset? Huh? <laughs> Think about it. Come on, Valentine, let's go. Hold it, Riley. Why? I want to go upstairs. Since you started this, let's wind it up. Huh? Oh, Brooksy? Yes, George. Has he finished yet? Just about. It took time to write all the questions. Here. Oh, good. Oh, excuse me, Everett. This is Lieutenant Riley. Uh, Lieutenant Riley. He knows, George. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, how do you do, Everett? Uh, now, let's see. I had to remain in town to see about luggage and so on. Besides, I believe Dora wanted to surprise everyone with the news of our marriage. Wait a minute, what's that? Hey, you mean Everett here? Dora and and I had been married by the captain of our ship just after we sailed from India. (laughs) How about that, Riley? Now let's do some guessing about what else she was going to tell at 8 o'clock. All right, all right. So you put a bee in everybody's bonnet. Well, that's all you were doing, Lieutenant. But I didn't try to get a bullet put in somebody's bonnet. Yes, George, don't you see? If Dora was murdered before any of them knew that she was married... Yeah, and you, you pull your smart stunt in a house full of guns. Okay, 
Okay, so Everett here is in danger now. If this does have anything to do with Dora's money, then Everett stands just as much in the way of the killer as she did. You're up against a case with no real clues, Riley. You won't get anywhere unless you force someone's hand. With what? Those boys I've got upstream haven't even found the place where she was killed yet. They haven't even found... Besides, if there are any bullets aimed at the kid here, I'll get them first. What? Yeah, come on, Everett. Hey, Valentine! Wait, wait, wait You too, Brooksy. We got places to go. The dollhouse, George? Yeah, this thing won't make sense otherwise. Come on in. Here, Everett. Now, look. The starting point's her character. Dora loved this place by the river. She liked the rhythm of the falls. Well, she was unhappy this afternoon, so where else do you think she'd come? But, George, her body was upstream. George, what are you doing? Here, write him a note, Angel. I don't want him to think I'm crazy throwing a wooden tray off the balcony. There it is. See? George, it's going toward the waterfall. Uh Uh-huh. Floating in a circle. But it's moving upstream. It's an eddy, that's all, from the waterfall. I see. Now it's swinging toward the bank again. And a body would do that, too, wouldn't it? There. It's right where we found her body. Uh-huh. So she was killed here, wasn't she? She was killed and thrown off this balcony. Hey, look at this, Brooksy. Spot on the rug. Blood? And that mark on the railing out there. So there are clues. Maybe even fingerprints. The murderer wasn't able oh, to... Oh, he tried rid- to clean up all right, but he needed time. That back current out there gave it to him. Now, Riley's men are still a mile away, beating the brush. I can run over to the house. No, no, and... no. Now's the murderer's chance to come out here. And now that he's looking for Everett anyway. Hey, sh- what? There's nothing, I guess. I wonder if the kid over there would be game. Here, Everett. Give me the pencil. Now. Hey, did you hear that? No. Well, now look, Brooksy. Take the flashlight and get out of here fast. Oh, but Never George, mind I... anything. Get going. Move upstream. Make lots of noise. You're supposed to be all of us. Understand? Come on, a hurry. Okay, George. Now, take it easy, Everett. It's all right. Oh, you're not. Here, I'll write another one. We're the welcoming committee. I've spotted enough evidence in here to hang the murderer. He has to come back to destroy it. Just keep quiet and... What's the matter? What is it, Everett? You you want the pencil? It will be welcome to nothing, Mr. Valentine. There are are guns. guns... Up, up in the house. house. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, he'll be armed, won't he? Well, hey, wait a minute. Dora kept her things down here. She liked to hunt, too, didn't she? Sure. Sure, come on, help me find something. That's it. Well, there's nothing over here, but... Huh? Yeah. Yeah, a rifle. Good, that'll do it. Thanks. Now, you stay down here, Everett, behind the door. That's it, that's good. I'll get back by the balcony. See better from there. Now, don't you worry, kid. It's about over. Funny how it gets in your ears, the rhythm of the waterfall. Gets in your head and you hear nothing else. Hey, listen. No, no, that wasn't anything. She was a lonely girl, Dora. But she was proud, like the waterfall. Wouldn't let herself love anything until you came along. And you were worse off than she was. Wonder what it's like to hear nothing but water falling and drums pounding. Valentine. 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 Ah, Valentine. What was that? No, I don't hear anything. Just the water. Wait a minute, what's that? He's here. He's here. Something it's outside, I guess. I can't say who it is, but it's Cynthia more. heard something down here at supper time. A man's He's voice. Here. The man who killed his sister. The door open? I can't tell. The waterfall makes so much noise. Where is he? I can't hear him. Where is he? Fire! Fire! Mr. Valentine, shoot! I guess you can stop standing in the doorway, Riley, and turn on the lights. Okay. Ah, thanks. Wait. Well, that waterfall does get in a guy's ears. Oh, no. It would have been hard for Cynthia to tell what man's voice she heard down here yelling at Dora. But Dora could hear a little herself, couldn't she? No wonder she was so upset when she came to my office. Wanted a man she could trust to be here tonight. Despite the fact she had a brand new husband. Yeah. That was going to be the 8 o'clock announcement, I guess. She was going to say that she heard a voice. 
A voice that tonight yelled at her. The poor kid, Riley, was going to expose the biggest heel in the world. Let me out of here. Let oh, me out of here. Take it easy, bud. That's better. That's it. <laughs> the guy who couldn't hear or talk. <laughs> How about this guy, Valentine? Fortune hunting with a new angle. <laughs> no voice. The only thing you should feel bad about is that he almost got away with it. Yeah. You know, Everett put in a lot of practice for that act. It was going to be worth eight or nine hundred thousand dollars, wasn't it? Getting his sympathy, being her husband. And if I hadn't read that note George wrote me the minute I got outside saying to get Lieutenant Riley, he I might did... have got away with it. Well, I knew the only way to make Everett talk in front of anybody was to scare him into it. Feed him a lot of phony stuff about finding evidence, like coffee stains on the rug. Coffee stains? <laughs> Why, you said... Yeah, Everett actually thought if I'd shoot Jake or Mr. Frail, then there'd be a fall guy. And the evidence would just be a few notes and a post-mortem. He'd be left clear. That's why he was so anxious to give me that rifle. How did you guess, Mr. Valentine? Welcome to nothing. That was a phrase of George's Everett seemed to like. Not much to go on, but, well, he repeated it in two of his notes. Mm -hmm. And when I gave him that phrase, I spoke it. He was just getting out of a taxi. It was dark. And what really clinched it, your sister had only begun to teach him how to read lips. I... I wonder if Dora really loved him. You mean, if she really loved Jake, don't you? Oh, no. I know that she didn't care for Jake, but... But has Jake got over caring for her? That's the question, huh? Well, um, why don't you answer the door and find out? But I... Go on, Cynthia, go on. Don't stand on ceremony. Yes. I see what you mean. <laughs> George, you're... Well, you are in favor of love, aren't you? Um, Angel, let's sort of put it this way. I think it's here to stay. If you're headed for the snow country or planning any jaunt next weekend, first stop at a standard station or at an independent Chevron gas station and ask for a battery check. These friendly station men can give you this protective service in about the same time it takes you to buckle on your skis. They'll make sure the battery's charged, that its water level is right, its terminal posts and clamps clean. And they'll inspect those all-important battery cables for signs of corrosion. Remember, a battery in A1 condition helps your car start fast, keeps the lights bright, assures top performance from your car radio and heater. But you don't have to wait for a long trip before asking for this protective service. For your own safety and comfort, wouldn't it be wise to get a battery check tomorrow? Ask for this speedy service at an independent Chevron gas station or at a standard station where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California. On behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy, Wally Mayer as Lieutenant Riley. Jeanette Nolan was heard as Cynthia, John Diener as Jake, Ed Begley as Frail, and Tony Barrett as Everett. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>